So the first thing you want to do is hook up your ground, your bare copper wire, your bare ground wire to your green terminal on the GFCI. And then what I did is I hooked up the neutral second and the hot third to the, in this case, the line terminals on the GFCI. Now what I want to do is hook up the neutral to the load. I have load wires that are taking electricity from the GFCI into the house to another outlet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this neutral wire on this silver terminal, all right, and I'm hooking it up such that whenever I tighten it down, it's going to spin this neutral wire around the terminal and tighten it. This is the right way that you want to do it. Um, otherwise, the wire could come off and you could have a really bad electrical situation in your box and somebody could get shocked. So do this for the neutral wire and then do it for the hot wire as well. Okay, so then the next thing that we need to do is then test this GFCI to make sure that it was wired correctly and I'll show you how to do that. I turned the power on at the service panel and now what I'm going to do is press the reset button. Um, so I'm going to press the reset button fully and it should stay in place, which it does, okay? And if the reset button does not stay in, you'll have to go to the troubleshooting section of the instructions that came with the GFCI. Now if the reset button stays in, I'm going to plug, or you should plug in a lamp or a radio to see if power TID is on. In this case you can see the power to this lamp is on. Now what I'm going to do is test it. I'm going to hit the test button on the GFCI and the electricity goes off which means that I tripped the GFCI and the trip you can probably barely see it in this video but the little red uh, the little red light here goes on to indicate that this GFCI has been tripped. So, if the power, if you press the test button to trip the device, this should stop the power flow of electricity to the lamp or the radio and the GFCI's red trip indicator light should come on. Uh, now, if the power stays on to your light bulb, now you have to again go to the troubleshooting directions of the GFCI because there's something incorrectly wired or there's just something going on with uh, how you installed the GFCI. So I hope this helps out. I feel fortunate because I did guess right and my line and my load uh, were correctly assumed by me. Um, so if you have a GFCI that needs to be installed like this, uh, carefully read the directions of the outlet that you choose, the GFCI outlet that you choose, and you can um, make sure that nobody in your family gets electrocuted when they go to plug in something on the exterior of your house. So that's it. Take care.